All right, so step one is to do this rough sketch. We've already set up our digital file for assignment six. It's at the right resolution. It's at the right dimensions. If we need to bring anything in from our assignment five or our assignment four, depending on which image we're using, we have those assignments. But the first step is to do a blocking sketch. So if we look at where you post the assignment, this is an introduction to it. Type design is all about having a plan for how it works with the image within the given space. So this is uh, the design by Kyle Lambert for the second season of Stranger Things. And the poster designer was provided with some of the key art you know, that they were allowed to use. But just like we have a logo design we can use, or we have a spot illustration. But as the poster designer, he played with these different blocking sketches of where the text might go with the image and even the orientation of the image itself. It could be tilted, it could be smaller, it could be larger. And then we get to the type design of the actual Stranger Things like logo type. And the reason I use Stranger Things is because it's got this great opening that's very retro. And it's all based on its type. Right? So it's just slow, what are called motion graphics, slow pans of its type as they're moving together so that by the end, you're actually seeing type design in practice. So this is type layout and typography. It's not just the design of the letters. It's actually their spacing, their arrangement. Sometimes there's, there's uh, attributes like underlines or decorations or bullets, things that make it stronger. And to understand all of that, this is not a, a type design class, but it's an aspect of digital art now. There's a lot of specialized vocabulary. And some of my favorite things to consider are what's called the kerning. So here they are kerned to connect. The kerning is the space in between the individual blocks of type. And one lesson I learned when I took typography was that if you think of each letter as having a glass of water around it, like it's a letter dunked in a glass of water, what you want is for the same amount of displacement to happen for the water for each letter. So when the, the letter form takes up a lot more space, like a G, then it displaces a lot of water, right? So then when you have a, a letter form that takes up less space, like the I, you need to shrink that kerning in so it doesn't displace any more water or less water than the G did. So you think about that space around them as being like dunked in water and that water amount should be fairly equal no matter the letter form. But sometimes the letter forms are wider, sometimes they're, they're thinner. So that's why the kerning might, might mix and match. This is just using a regular typeface, not custom designing the type, right? And just playing with kerning to make certain things overlap and match, certain things be tighter that's going to look a lot better than just taking the default spacing that comes with each typeface. Also, they do this nice thing where they make the S and the R bigger. And then they add some textural effects and the glowing. And we're going to talk about all of that. One retro texture effect I'm going to teach you through this project is called CMYK color separation. We have slides for that. It has to do with with how things are actually printed. So then when we get to the, the finished poster layout for Stranger Things season two, we have the, the illustration, the line art, the coloring, and then the layout with the type design. Here's an artist. You can see the sketching of type design here. This is all custom type. This isn't modifying any existing typefaces and different ways that even the same exact approach can be uh, rendered differently depending on where negative space is used and how shadows are used and what was picked. 
This is an, an artist I went to school with who, who works in movie uh, poster design named Akiko Sternberger. And for each movie, it's a totally different thing, but she'll design all of it, and type design is one part of that job. Right? And then Shepard Ferry, the guy who did the Obama Hope poster, his job is not just making images, it's also to lay out type to go with the images, and often designing his own typefaces. So that's what we're doing, just wrapping them around an image we've already created. Some inspiration. I really like this one. This one has a lot of like extra embellishments, which we probably wouldn't have time for. But I like the simplicity of the layout. And whenever you're doing design, you're dealing with a hierarchy of focal points. Right? When you do a, a spot illustration that's just free floating, that's the thing you look at. You want that to command your attention. But when you're doing poster design, you might want the image to come first and then the type to go second. And then maybe there's sub subheadings. On this one, the type almost goes first, and then the image supports that because of the, the really stark contrast and placement. And then eventually you get down to here, and it just says hell at the bottom, which I kind of like. So like heaven's at the top, hell's at the bottom. It's kind of telling you, be heavenly and celebrate, or you go to hell. It's clever. So, if I was going to do my, uh, my logo, the Nico head, I thought it might be funny to do a type design of Nico that looks like Nike, right? So you can play those kind of games. But I think I am going to do the Day of the Dead one to go with this. So next is the text blocking. Looking at different inspirations, how do I want it to look? I'm just going to do a new layer. I'm going to do it underneath my spot illustration layer. And I'm going to call this my text block. And it's just a sketch. And you can do this by hand as well. But I do want you to include this in your submission. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just use a brush with a red color. And I'm just going to block it in. I'm going to turn off my smoothing because that slows everything down. Now, why is it called text blocking instead of just sketching type? And the real reason is because it doesn't matter what you make the letters look like. It matters the rectangles that they fit in. So these are text blocks. If I really want to play up dead, I'm going to give it the biggest text block with maybe overlapping kerning. So that's one solution. And basically what you want, the same way that your, your spot illustration kind of activates the rectangle, you want the text block of your type to be an interesting shape and placement in the rectangle on its own. So that's one solution. Let's do another one. You can try out different options, the advantages of digital art, right? I'll still do this below, but what if it's more of a curvy text, text blocking? And what if it runs behind the image more? So it kind of weaves in between. And then how do these blocking shapes work for the overall poster? And what do I like more? Let's try another solution. What if I put something like, like a tattoo banner Block it out here. 
And then on the bottom, something like that. And you can, might decide, I don't want a vertical there. I want it to be more of a, a tilt. I want that D to be that way and maybe this D to be this way. Like two fangs. I don't know. So sketching just starts to help you envision the kind of type you might want to, to use. Doesn't mean you have to, to work on top of your sketch and create the type yourself. But you need to know what you're looking for. And we'll talk about some different types of type. Whether it has decorative serifs, whether it's blocky, whether it's modern, whether it's a script. So I'm going to clean this up a little bit because I think this will be a good way to go. I want you to probably play with at least three different text blocking solutions. Because you really are just kind of introducing yourself to the problem before. And then the other great thing about digital is I feel like the type is overshadowing the illustration a little bit. So what can I do with digital? I can always use my compositing skills, right? And transform different elements. Until I feel they fit a little bit better. If we can read day of pretty clearly, I think dead can be obscured quite a bit in this illustration, and it's not going to hurt it. I can even warp it, which can be really helpful, especially if we're a little too used to things being straight up and down when we're sketching our type. We can collapse the spaces in between. We can hold down shift and distort and then move things all together. Yeah, I like that. So of these different blocking solutions, you're going to pick the one you like best. And I think I like this one best. So I am going to take this whole design and maybe I'm going to change it just a little bit. Maybe I'm going to shrink the gray just a little bit, hold down shift and option so I can distort it. Shrink it in a little bit. I'm going to make this a pretty tight background. Raise it up. So it really complements my type design well. And then I can also use the crop tool and change my borders. Hold down option on the side so they're evened out. All right. Now I'm going to check my image size just so I know what my proportions are. 11 by 15 by 350. So at my minimum print size, 240, that's still over 16 by 20. So I'm good. So this is the text blocking that I chose of the three different options. Let's see what it, how it activates the space just on its own. It's pretty interesting. It definitely leads your eye into the illustration. It supports it a little bit better than I think some of the others. All right. All right. So I'm going to... Just do a screen grab of this. I'll save it. Then just do a quick screen grab, Command Shift 4 on a Mac. And I want to actually grab, the reason I'm doing a screen grab is so I can get the black around the border. So you can see the full proportion in my sketch. And then in the assignment, I'm going to drop it in. This is my text blocking sketch.